Today is Tuesday the 19th of 2022. I was praying for Emmanuel and this vision is what came about. I saw a cat in a um, cone or a funnel which they put around their head so that when they're wounded their hands can't reach the wound or their mouth can't reach the wound to lick it and do things like that. Um, not the hands, but in this case, actually, um, the cat was in its little funnel and its little paw reached up and it grabbed its own head and pulled off what looked like a mask. Um, and it didn't change anything. It was still a cat, but it, the, the look of the cat changed, um, <clears throat> Afterwards, the cat was standing in an all-white background, and the floor broke open in front of him. So it, it was like wood, and it kind of snapped off and, and opened up in front of him like a trail. And inside the broken wood, white wood planks, um, up came a um, like a mine shaft cart and uh, railing. So the cat jumped into the mine cart and it began to go into the, into like a cave, like a deep cavern type thing. So the cat was inside this um, mine cart and began to go down, 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 swirling all over the place into the darkness. At one point, it passed like a waterfall on the right side and continued to go and then in the vision, it went on for so long, it going down and going left and right and down and up and down. And that in my mind, I kind of went back to that waterfall thinking, just sort of taking a look at it because I was waiting <laughs> for this, you know, minecart to, to get to its uh, destination. Anyway, and, and when I went back and looked at the waterfall, I saw that the water had become so strong that it had broken uh, the... Um, I wanted to say trail, the mine cart, or excuse me, the um, rail, so that no no one could come on that on that way again. In that way, um, it was just broken off, and the water was kind of going down through that spot. Anyway, so I continued to watch the mine cart go down, and it finally it ended in a underwater cavern. I think I may have seen this place before. It may be the same cavern that I've seen Emmanuel um, in a different vision. It looked the same anyway. Um, he dropped down in sort of like an elevator type thing with some people. He brought people here before. Um, anyway, when the mine cart ended on like the shore of this place, the cat got out <clears throat> and the mine cart kind of crept slowly into the water. And right before the track ends, I saw the, uh, right before the track goes into the water, I saw the cat and the cat with its mouth chewed up a, chewed up the rail in a spot. So again, it was cut off and was no longer able to, a cart was no longer able to go down and go into the water because of the um, track being basically severed by the mouth of the cat. At this point, I see um, a man in the water, and he was told to me that he was like a shipwreck survivor, um, and he was in the water just in his feet. And... In front of me was sort of like a table, like a small little, little spot. I, I don't, I, I would say, I'm not sure if it was like a small side table or like a little rock, but it was a flat surface for something to be able to be placed on. So I saw, I didn't see the face of this man. I saw his like torso and down and I was able to see that he was, you know, um, his pants were ragged. They, they had no, no longer um, there were no longer pants. They were like sh ragged shorts because of how long he had been shipwrecked. But um, anyway, he, he began to reach into his pocket and pull things out and place it on this table right before my eyes so I could see it. And they were just really random things. Um, 
the first thing I saw was a toy car on its upside down on its back. Um, then I saw like a rat. I think it was dead. Um, I saw like a coin. And I can't remember if I saw anything else. Just a lot of real random things that he placed on this table in front of me. And then the next thing that happened <clears throat> is that I was able to see back in the past, right when this young man was shipwrecked. Um, I didn't see the ship really. I might have. Um, anyway, and I saw him on the shore up above on the on the surface. And he was running along the... He was running along the shoreline and he saw a cave opening and he kind of ran and he, f I think he fell down before he got there and then he got back up and kind of looked down into the cave and it just was this black hole and he ended up not falling in a way that was accidental. He ended up falling into it on purpose. So he kind of let himself go down, um, even backwards. So where his back was, um, towards the ground and he was just falling and you could just see him falling, but it was a decision that he had made to do. Um, and then you saw him coming through finally, I'm sure it was a quite a long ways to the bottom cavern and land in the water. And the water I think was shallow, but it didn't cause harm or anything. Um, I mean, he went under, but I don't, I don't know that I see any real depth to the water. Um, I mean, the deeper you go in, I think it's it's deeper. I do believe that there is even deeper water to go in from this place because this place is all lit up somehow. Or there's no way for there to be light in here. It's it's way down deep, but it is lit up. And you can see in the background that there is another cave that has water leading through it. And um, I think those are deeper waters. So there's, a, there's an option to go deeper still. Um, anyway, this man was in this water and he landed in the water and he came up out of it and he was soaking wet. Um, and then he came forward and from this time, cause the other time was his left pocket from his right pocket, he began to empty out things too. And in his right pocket, there was treasures. So he had all his treasures, his like watch and his, you know, bracelet -y gold things. I don't know. There are a bunch of gold things and that was from his right pocket, but I did see this backwards. I did see, what was happening, what he had offered after being shipwrecked for such a long time under the water and what he had offered initially. Very two, very much different things and very much um, different times that he offered it and different pockets that he, he took that out of. Um, and that was all that I saw at this time. Oh, and also the uh, First Timothy uh, 19, excuse me, 18 and 19. Well, Nicole had a vision a few days back, uh, prior to Tuesday morning's meeting, and uh, she shared with me that um, right now I just want to add a few comments to it, give us some interpretation. Now, John, Brother John is a kind of person, so I think, <laughs> to sh long story short, I think the cats in in the shed was basically his life. Now in the beginning I get to know John when did the Lord you know told me to tell him that he, I sent his life is he going to teach him wisdom. <laughs> Sounds arrogant but those days we don't know if, uh, what God can up to, you know. So anyway, so we have been launching the journey pretty walked together through the years and um kind of build a beautiful relationship to our lives. I think also, you know, I was uh, asking others pray for me. That's when you call had a vision. And uh, John has some physical trouble personally. I think, uh, you know, God is using it to, to further produce a deeper walk in his life, deeper wisdom, if you will, be practice his life. I think it can come about, seems indicated in this vision. Now, mindset oftentimes, I think, reminded me at least, uh, is uh, in the scriptures in the book of Job, speaking about, you know, you, 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 you seeking gold, uh, like mining, uh, you know, seeking wisdom, like mining gold, <laughs> follow a chef. Anyway, the other person, the young man, is uh, 
obviously God is speaking of a certain personality, a young brother who has, in my assessment through the years, really is a is a one a picture of a stubborn, a rebellious heart. You know, one perfect victim and product of religious spirit. Uh, basically, the walk is in the mind, but not in the heart. The walk is a pretty much in self-deluded way, a lot of the pride and rebellion. Even God's give a warning, give a discipline, give a clear directions, but refuse really walking in it, and justify away the rebellion, the, the uh, defined spirit. I mean, literally, uh, to my understanding, is pretty much typ typical, you know, believers in the Western Christianity was produced, especially in the place where people use intellectual understanding to replace spiritual led, that um, spiritual discipline and God, you know, yielded heart, basically a winning heart, that kind of thing. So. Uh, in the Bible, God talking about the, his people as a stubborn, stiff-necked people. That's basically the typical picture. Now, during the meeting, the, you know, Tuesday morning we have meetings. And during the meeting, I think about him actually. He's about to walk. I think he is like the the ones that Paul, you know, mentioned in the Bible talking with someone shipwrecked their faith, basically. And uh, interesting enough. Different people have different perspectives on such young young people. Most actually apply sympathy and think God or others like me who play a role, maybe bring discipline and uh, bring a restraint to such war as a harsh, uh, unsupported. The truth of the matter, um, it's to, maybe to the opposite, you know. So God called. There are mules, donkeys, you know, even goats in, in, in the midst of the people. They have to be sorted out, disciplined. It's in today's Christianity, which is easy believism and actually self lying, self deceiving Christianity, lawless Christianity, I would call it. Such behavior, such pretentious ways, walking, seldom being examined. And seldom be identified, discerned, and cast aside as unfit for the walk with the Lord, not mentioned to serve the Lord. But that's being said, so it's interesting to see prior to the meeting, Nicole would have such a vision. I believe that young man in the in the vision, in her vision, is that young man, you know. So now she had a vision prior. Um, I think I published the title as Key, Key and Map. You can do a research on Nicola Kase dash region um, Key, Key and Map. Uh, you know, some keywords you're able to find that out on SoundCloud or YouTube or even our website, you know, kingdomage.org to see uh, their. Uh, seems there a place called a, a cabin on the ground, and um, she said basically that same place. I believe that's a, that's a which she mentioned. Anyway, I think uh, that's uh, all I got for this region. It's interesting to me, you know, how God using Nicole to speak things. I don't think she actually have a clue what's going on. No, we have a clue. That's the beauty of God's work through the Holy Spirit. Uh, you know the key words again: shipwreck the faith, and uh, go deeper in the searching of God's wisdom. Even it's hidden, even it's painstaking, but we need to go. So, bless the Lord.